Now we're going to talk about dynamic vehicle controls. What separates dynamic vehicle control from ABS braking is that the operator actually takes no action to enable the brakes. The system is going to automatically identify a condition and apply the brakes necessarily to correct that condition. Let's look at a few of the things on modern vehicles that don't require the driver to press the brakes to activate the brakes. The oldest and most familiar everybody with is traction control. That was the earliest thing that came on we need to talk about. Electronic brake force distribution is kind of one of those things most people don't even know they have. We'll talk about that in detail and tell you what it's used for, along with electronic brake assist and how it helps boost the braking power to maximum stopping power without causing a loss of control. Limited slip differential, yes, we can do it electronically. It doesn't have to be mechanical any longer. In off-roading, we can use downhill assist control where we're going down very steep grades. Hill start assist is used to help us start off on a hill so the vehicle doesn't roll back. And of course, vehicle stability control, we're going to talk about in detail. But one thing you might have seen in a commercial lately is a guy said, hey, I didn't see the car stop in front of me, but my car did. It applies the brake. So the newest thing is automatic braking to avoid a collision during city driving conditions. Let's talk about these individually. Traction control. The ABS system uses the electric pump to supply pressure and applies braking to the wheels that lose traction during acceleration. Now, the engine control on modern vehicles, use this all works in conjunction with the electronic throttle, reduce the opening during poor traction conditions. Here's the way it works. Or without traction control, we're off to the left up there moving around. With it, we can go forward. The brake actuator or skid control ECU applies braking to the slipping wheel. In this case, it's the one on the right with a slippery surface, so we can go straight up the road. Electronic brake force distribution is a different thing. The ABS system modifies the hydraulic pressure applied to individual wheels to compensate for vehicle load during braking. Now this can eliminate mechanical proportioning valves. We used to have proportioning valves that sent more braking to the front than the rear. Modifying it even during cornering, not just with the load. Let's see how this works. During cornering, we have more pressure on the left side of the than on the right side. So if we're braking in a corner, this system is capable of applying a greater load to the left side, more braking power. If we have loaded vehicles with luggage in the trunk, it will put more braking on the rear brakes than other times. We do this all by looking at the speed of the wheels as they decelerate. We can apply as much power as we need to get maximum braking force. This is one of the ways that ABS reduces stopping distance. Everybody keeps asking that question. I can't believe ABS reduces stopping distance. It does, and this is one of the features that does that for us. Electronic brake assist. We're making an emergency stop, and the ABS interprets a rapid application of the brake pedal as an emergency stop. This requires a brake pedal sensor that shows us how quickly we're moving the brake pedal. The system uses the pump to increase brake pressure for an emergency stop that goes above that applied by the brake master cylinder. And while monitoring the wheel speed to achieve maximum stopping power. The isolation valve closes and the pump is used to increase brake pressure to a higher pressure than that available from the master cylinder. Now this starts getting more complicated than our simple four channel system we just had before. This system returns to normal operation when the driver releases the brake or the vehicle slows down properly, whichever occurs first. ABS action will, with the pressure reduction valve, can prevent excessive slip and maintain control and again, reduce the stopping distance. Every lawyer in the country Sue's on all these different things has been looking for a situation where ABS increased stopping distance and caused an accident. And you haven't heard of many people winning those cases. Electronic limited slip differential. It can be used to electronically apply a brake, 
during acceleration to produce to eliminate slip. This is very much like our traction control application. The difference between limper to slip differential operation and traction control is engine torque is not reduced for a limited slip differential operation like it is with traction control. So at first you say, oh, it's just like traction control. No, it's not. It's different. We do not try to limit this in four-wheel drive. That has to be done differently. Limited slip differential mode is not suitable for normal driving. It can cause handling problems at road speed by trying to maintain limited slip on turns. Downhill assist. It can be used to limit vehicle speed on severe downgrades without the driver depressing the brake or the accelerator. Yes, the driver has to select this mode with the vehicle stopped. It does not go in it automatically. Here is one exception. He does have to select this mode, but he doesn't have to depress the brakes. It limits speed to three to four miles an hour forward and two to three in reverse. So if you're in severe mountainous terrain, off-roading, and you select downhill assist control, it'll keep the car from going too fast. It must be in low range four-wheel drive mode with the transmission in low for it to be in this mode. It's a few guidelines you got to have. It's strictly for off-road functions. Hill start assist, it holds the vehicle that is stopped on a hill and the accelerator is not depressed. What's going to happen, it's going to reduce the rollback when the driver releases the brakes. Some old ladies take a time to move their foot from the brake to the gas and this simply keeps the vehicle from rolling back. It will only hold on moderate grades and only last for about five seconds. The system uses wheel speed sensors and yaw rate sensors to determine the vehicle stopped and it's on a heel and the brakes are applied. So it does all this automatically. The slip indicator light will blink indicating the brakes are ready to release when the five seconds are about to expire.